Hi friends, today we are going to talk about where to shoot boudoir if you do not have a studio. So let's get into it. The way you say my name just makes me tremble deep inside. I want to feel your touch and get enough of you. are just starting out shooting boudoir, a great location to start is in your own home. Some people this will not work for because they may have kids or they just don't have the space in their home. They may not have a spare bedroom or you may not want to shoot in your own bedroom. But for a lot of people, you have a perfectly wonderful place to shoot if you wanna use your living room, your guest bedroom, your own bedroom, your garage, if you have a bonus room in your home, any of these could be great to start shooting boudoir in. And if you don't wanna use your home, then you can always ask the client to use their home. For me, this is a little bit hard because I don't love shooting in other people's homes only because I've had things where I've shown up and it's a hot mess and I just am like, whoa, it's a lot of stuff here. So if you do this and you want to shoot in somebody's home, maybe ask them to send you a couple snapshots so you can see what it looks like. And then that way you can decide if maybe you need to shoot in a hotel instead, or you can maybe even ask them to clean up, or maybe you go over beforehand and help them kind of put personal stuff away. I mean, it's kind of... I don't know, you just don't want to walk in and then there's so much stuff there that it makes it hard to shoot in. Let's jump over to the computer and I will show you some of the hacks that I use when I'm booking hotel rooms and other locations. Let's go. When I'm looking for a hotel, I will pop over to Hotels.com, put in my location and the dates that I'm looking for, and then I'll hit search. And then to narrow down my search, I'll click on neighborhood and then select the neighborhood that I'd like to be in and then search from there for the different hotels that I like and I'll save a few and then I'll go through and look at it in more detail. So this one right here looks really interesting to me. However, I can see they used a really wide lens and that is a little troubling because you really don't know how big the room is based on these photos because they're using a super wide lens. So it could be a really tiny room. So something that I do is after I look through the photos and see if I really like it, I love how you can, it has a great view. You can see that there's no other hotels right directly beside it. That's a really good thing. You want to make sure you can see out the windows and that they can't see inside your windows, especially if you want to shoot natural light. A trick that you can do to see how the rooms really look is to hop over to TripAdvisor, search for the same hotel, and then look at the traveler photos. These photos are by people that stayed there and took their own photos. You do have to kind of skim through them because you never know like the random guy that's in the photo. <laughs> so. So you just kind of go through until you find a room that looks like the room that you want to book. I usually book a king bedroom, so I know to look for that. And here's one right here. So I'm going to look at this one. And it's, it's not a very big room, but it's not super tiny. So that one's okay. New York City, there's definitely a lot of hotels that have really tiny rooms, so you really want to check these out and make sure that what you're getting is not going to be super small. This one looks cute. Definitely look for like how much space is around the bed. And this could be with a cell phone that has a wide lens, but you can see it's not distorted. It's a little bit bigger of a room, which is great. And then I just scroll through and look for anything. I also read the reviews, see what people say about, you know, what's around the area and all of that good stuff. So let's move on to my next tip. A friend of mine told me recently about dayuse.com. So that's what this one is right here. And what's so interesting is that I found the same hotel that I was looking for before and I didn't, wasn't even looking for it. I had no idea it would be on here. 
However, even though day use is a little bit less expensive than renting the hotel for the whole night, it actually isn't that much less expensive. This hotel on Hotels.com and TripAdvisor was only $109. And as you can see here on this site, it was $89. So that's only $20 less and you only get it for a couple of hours. So I would definitely go ahead and spend the extra money and have it for the whole night because then you could shoot a few sessions on the day that you check in and then maybe a session the morning before you check out. So definitely book it for the night for that price. Here we are on Airbnb. So some important things about this, you'll basically just do the same thing, check in, check out dates. Um, let's get through that. We'll go ahead and pick these. And then you can pick the type of place. I always do entire place just because a private room or shared room might be very awkward when you're shooting boudoir. So definitely do entire place. And then you can do more filters and also do the area that you'd like to be in or neighborhood. So you just click on the neighborhood. I'm gonna do Soho cause I love Soho. Ooh, lots of scrolling. And then um, you can look through the different options. The important key to this is going down and looking at their house rules because you want to make sure that it doesn't say anything about no photography because there are some places that don't allow photography just for different reasons. They might have had a bad experience. Um, I can tell you that I've heard stories from some of my friends that do Airbnb about boudoir photographers coming in and doing the confetti poppers or glitter or having florals in the tub and clogging up the tubs and you know not cleaning stuff up. So unfortunately that has made some people not allow photography but you definitely need to make sure you go in read the rules just in case they say this. You can send them a message and ask them if you can. Sometimes they'll say yes or they might want your liability insurance certificate in case anything happens so they can make a claim. But anyway, that's my tip for Airbnb. Dayuse.com may be a good alter uh, alternative <laughs> if you just need something for the day or if you need that time block like maybe you want to start at 8 a.m in the morning and finish by 6 p.m that day but you don't need it for overnight then you'll save you know 20 to 40 dollars so it could be a good option so definitely check that out i'll link it down below so you can find it easy you can also look for other studios in your city there's a lot of photographers that may have a studio that they rent it out so you can just google and look for this there's other websites that also help you find studio space that you can google for that too so definitely check your options there's so many things that you can do to get started in the genre of boudoir if you want to see some examples of different locations that I've shot at, just hop over to my Instagram and you can see lots of different options. So I've shot all over the country, also in Europe, but you can just see like the kind of hotels that I shoot at. So I do look for more clean lines. I have shot in some pretty wild looking places too. So it just depends on what you're looking for. You can definitely find any, any kind of look that you'd like. I have also shot in a car garage, I've shot in restaurants, I've shot at a furniture store. So the options really are endless. It just depends on what you have in mind and what kind of shoot or how you want your shoot to look. Like if you want it to be a styled shoot. So the garage shoot that I had, we used vintage cars that were actually at the garage and it was just super cool. It was something different. It was for a client, so I cannot share those images, unfortunately. And you'll find this happens a lot too. As you're shooting boudoir, you may shoot in a really amazing location and not be able to share because it's client images. So if you find out in advance that you're not going to be able to share client images, you may want to hire a model or have a friend come and do a few boudoir shoots so or a few boudoir photos so you will have something to share. 
because if your client says no, then you don't have this spectacular location. And I've had this happen to me before, but as I have grown over the years, I've learned that if I'm shooting at a really spectacular, I can't talk today, spectacular location, then I am definitely going to have a friend or maybe even my hair and makeup artist. I might be like, girl, bring a cute little lingerie outfit because we're gonna do a couple photos before the client gets here. Just think about that as well. Another option is shooting outside. I bought a clawfoot tub a few years ago that I put in my garden and I absolutely love it. I use it for boudoir shoots, I use it for maternity photo shoots, glamour photo shoots, just any type of shoot anybody wants to do out there. I love it. It's just so much fun. You can do milk baths, all kinds of fun stuff. So that can be an option for you as well. much for watching today I really appreciate it and I appreciate all my subscribers thank you guys so much for being here and I hope that you will hit the like button the thumbs up button you know that button the little thumb down there so I'd love if you smash that little guy so because it helps me with the algorithm it helps other people find my videos and it helps me be able to produce this content for you. And over time, I'm hoping that this content's gonna grow and be better, and you'll get even more amazing information from me. So definitely hit that like button, and subscribe if you are not already subscribed, because I'd love to see you in my future videos. So thanks again, guys, and I'll see you later, bye. Isn't my necklace so cute? One of my clients got this for me. I'm obsessed with it.